And so without any further ado, let me welcome to the microphone the first speaker to address you. And that person is the former president of the Barbados Economic Society and our candidate for the Barbados Labour Party. <laughs> welcome economist and comrade Ryan Strong. Good evening, everybody, comrades. Thanks a lot, Jeffrey, for the kind words of introduction. And my task this evening is essentially to open the batting, so to speak. But I have a time frame within which to, to set the scene, because each and every one of us here this evening, by now, must be asking ourselves, let me be kind. <laughs> what is going on in Barbados? And that's the best way I can put it because we have a, a, an international audience. There may be children listening, so I don't want to, to in any way, um, this is still a family program. And so the things that I would love to say, I really can't say explicitly. But what is going on in Barbados? Now, I'm an economist. I'm now a candidate um, for Christchurch East Central. So let me say a good um, hello to all of my, my uh, colleagues here from Christchurch East Central and the wider party. But what I'm going to speak to you this evening as it relates to the estimates, and it's something that in spite of the numbers, whatever the numbers may be, and we have grave reservations about the numbers, but I'm not going to bore you with numbers. What I'm going to talk to you about is something called fiscal discipline. <laughs> Welcome, Clyde. Now, it's not something that is particularly sexy to talk about. It is not. I'm not going to pretend that it is. But it is a very important element. If we, the Barbados Labour Party, are going to deliver a better life for our people. It is fundamental to meeting that goal. And so when I look at the estimates and, I, and it's context now, now I've kind of lost count in that I'm not sure how many times the Democratic Labour Party has attempted to truly turn the ship around. How many is that? All the time, she says, all the time. <laughs> and when I assess the estimates at a high level, without getting into the nitty gritty, and you listen to any commentator from the government side about what is going on in Barbados, and you actually take some time and look at the numbers, there's a distinct gap between what they say is going on and what is happening on the ground in reality. And the challenge for us as a party is to highlight to the public the consequences of that gap between what is being said and what is reality. And I come back to fiscal discipline. Fiscal discipline. Now, in any democracy, obviously run by politicians, the Minister of Finance, yes, whilst being a politician, his job is not politics, primarily. When the economy is growing, you have to be disciplined to maintain growth. When an economy is not growing, the Minister of Finance has to roll up his sleeves, ladies and gentlemen, and ensure that the discipline of government is helping to deliver the goods and services that they say that they're going to deliver for the people. Discipline. Now, discipline comes or takes many forms. It takes many forms. Now, each of us knows full well that at any given point in time, we may not be able to deliver something definitive for our families, our friends, 
because of circumstances. So we acknowledge that. We acknowledge that. However, however, when you make an announcement or pronouncement, whatever it is, it has to be backed up with some sense of reality. So if you're telling us that your homegrown economic stabilization program, however long the name is, is working, is working, is working. What does that mean, is working? And when you preview these estimates, and you ask yourself, okay, the deficit was year high a couple of years ago. They introduced some measures, the taxation predominantly. And this is now about three, four years systematically that each and every one of us in here would have been faced with some direct tax at a time when we have not necessarily seen any improvement in the delivery of any good or any service from the public sector. So it cannot be working, because if we are prepared to accept that we have to dig deep, whole strain, so to speak, then there must be something that we can point to and say, okay, I have sacrificed because I've been able to maintain some level of quality of delivery of public service in a specific area. Can anybody in here this afternoon or on the World Wide Web point to anything definitive in Barbados that you can say is working right now? Nothing. Nothing. It's a hard thing to, to have to say that about your country in the 50th anniversary of independence, you know. And it's not, it is not meant to be critical of the government. This is the reality. This is the reality. So when we come back to the estimates now, whether it's water, whether it's public health, Zika, chicken gunya, whatever you want to call it, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, okay? There's nothing in these estimates, and, and, and that's if you, are, if you agree that those things are critical. I mean, you have to accept that you have to have priorities. No, I didn't mention crime. I didn't mention crime. But that too is important. But there's nothing in these estimates right now that will suggest to any of you that we are addressing the needs of the country right now. So you ask yourself, you paid the solid waste tax, which I think we marched and rightfully got repealed, you paid the consolidation tax, which incidentally, and I come back to discipline again, the consolidation tax, which was introduced on persons earning over $50,000 a year. It was initially supposed to end March 2015 at the end of the 19 month program. Sounds familiar? So we came last year, Around this time, I say, okay, well, things didn't really turn out as we thought, so we're going to extend it for another year. This is the minister here, not me. This is not, this is not me, me talking. This is the minister in parliament. So you come now and you look at these estimates here, and you see a provision for next year for that tax. So after they repeal now the solid waste tax, they introduce oh sorry, they raise the rates on your land tax. So they just switch the, the tax from one to the, um, to, to the next. But mind you, it was, for, it was supposed to be for 19 months. And though that 19 months ended March of last year, ladies and gentlemen. But let me just bring it back to you now here when it comes to discipline, because I, it, is, it is important that we understand that when a minister of finance stands in any parliament, any part of the world, that P 
people must pay attention to what he says because each and every one of us in here, whether it's for your house or your business, you have to be able to plan. Planning is important to any economy. If you do not know, if you do not know or cannot trust the word of the Minister of Finance, it doesn't matter who he or she may be. <sighs> Sir, I don't think that that is particularly relevant to the discussion right now. It is not relevant. It is not relevant. I, I, I have to disagree with you on that. It is not relevant. I am saying, I am saying, that is an irrelevant fact, okay? No. Whoever he or she may be, the people of the country must be able to trust in what they say. Fiscal discipline requires that. Because if we as citizens dutifully stand up in the lines at BRA, sorry, BRA, and pay your taxes, sometimes you stand up in the line and it, it seems as if they don't even want to take the taxes. But we're, we're lawful citizens. You impose a tax. We may not like it, but you pay. But having paid it, the government must deliver. And on any indicator that you wish to choose to concentrate on, any indicator, the government has failed. These estimates is a demonstration of that failure. They call it fiscal consolidation. Now, it's a fancy word, but fiscal consolidation just means that you're trying to narrow the gap between what you earn and what you're spending. That's all such to the point where what you're earning could, in fact, be higher than what you're spending. So when you look at these estimates here now, and this is where the direction of the country now is important, and where you choose to spend the money is also important. In January, the governor of the central bank, in his report, indicated that the fiscal deficit, the target for the fiscal deficit was supposed to be 4%, sorry, not supposed to be. The target of 4% was within reach by the end of March 2016. That's this month, yeah? That's this month, 4%. These estimates, as, pre as currently presented by the Minister of Finance, says that the deficit is 6.3, or will be 6.3. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're telling me that this is your target of 4% and is within reach, I wanna know whose reach it is within. Because 2% is a, is a hell of a lot of money to be out. Into four or five years of a fiscal consolidation program. But it gets better in terms of the story. The fiction. So the government is allowing us to believe that the, the fiscal program is working. So remember, target 4%, they're saying now oh, the reality is going to be 6.3. But they're presenting a budget here this year for a deficit of 7.8% next year. Now you remember what I said, fiscal consolidation means that you're trying to narrow the gap between what you're earning and what you're spending. So, where are we then? Where are we? When you drill down a little deeper, and I'm sure that um, the others will speak to some very specific areas, but at a broad level, the Minister of Finance has to drive the process. So whatever the government's policy is, his or her responsibility, essentially, is to make sure that things are under control. Under control. When you present to me a set of data, a set of estimates that says that you are going to be increasing the deficit next year, 
But when you drill down, you recognize there's no little or no provision to help alleviate the water wars in the country. There's little, as a matter of fact, you cut the budget for the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. There's little or no provision for any of the other public health areas that are important. As I said, there's little or no provision when it comes to fighting crime, specifically, which we are concerned about. Okay? There's little provision for anything that is going to, to contribute right now to making our lives better. So I could accept if we were actually going to be very focused and help to resolve some of these issues that are burning in the country. Right now, my garbage hasn't been collected for the last couple of weeks. And I think I, I, I might be, my, my mind may be playing a trick on me because it might be three or four, but whose garbage has been collected in the last week? Yours? And now I, I see three hands. Out of four, okay, and before that, we had to wait. No, we are not even helping. As I said, the public health issues are critical, so you have to set priorities. You have to set priorities. So fiscal discipline means that whatever happens to be the critical issues at the moment. You have to deploy resources to deal with them because the, the consequence of not dealing with them effectively in your allocation of resources means that the delivery of public goods and services for the next year will be diminished. And based on the numbers here, they certainly expect to take a lot more revenue from each and every one of us. The revenue estimates are incredible. And without a significant amount of growth in the economy, where businesses are adding jobs, incomes are rising, prices are rising relatively slowly compared to, to what is being put out in the economy, then I don't see where this revenue is mysteriously going to come. And why do I raise that, that issue? It comes back to the discipline. If your assumptions for revenue are flawed and you're basing your expenditure on a flawed set of assumptions for revenue, because the government will spend. The government will spend. They've indicated where they will spend. Now, it's 50 years of independence. We are all proud Barbadians. But, 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 after 50 years of independence, we have to ask ourselves, what are the priorities that we need to focus on now to make the next 50 years better for our children and grandchildren? So the focus right now ought not to be how much money we can spend on celebrating it, but how much money we can spend in making things better for the next 50 years. That is what is the priority now. But we have some short-term issues that we have to deal with. And so the, the mix between what we are spending for that long-term growth and platform has to be guided by the immediate needs that we have facing us right now. And you can't do that if you have not stopped and taken stock of exactly where you are. Now, if any of, well, I'm sure that we, we all will recall the taxes that have been levied on us over the last four to five years. But each and every time the minister comes to the parliament, he gives a new set of numbers. It's almost as if he presses a reset button. So he will tell you that this year, this is what the deficit is expected to be. So. It might be 6.3, might be. But then when he comes back next, next year, if he comes back next year, he might tell you that, well, it, it was actually nine. So when you go back and you systematically 
examine the policy of government. At no time, at no time has the government got it right. Because if you do not know where you are right now, and you are making policy with 3 or 4% of expenditure somehow out there mysteriously, then it means that the prescription is wrong. Now, if you go to a doctor and he, and he misdiagnoses you, you're going to sue him. He gives you medication. You tell him, well, well buddy, I'm really allergic to X, Y, Z. But yet he go ahead and, and he prescribes the, 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 the medication. You have all rights to sue him. Now, in our case, we have been misled because misled from the point of view that they say it's working. But every time you come to the end of the period where you expect relief, because we don't want to be on medication forever. When you go to the doctor and he says to you, well, you have whatever you have, he prescribed the medication, it's a short period of time and you get better and you move on. You don't expect to be, or oh, try this, or try that, the next or the third, or unless it's something very chronic. And I'm saying to you, or what I'm suggesting to you, is that any time a government comes and tells you, well, we got it wrong the last time, so let me try another thing this time, let me try another thing next time, it means that they're not, they don't know what they're doing. They do not know what they're doing. They're guessing. And that's where I suppose Je Jeffrey would make reference to the guesstimates. They're guessing, but there are consequences for guessing, ladies and gentlemen. There are consequences for guessing. And the Democratic Labour Party has bluffed, guessed, pronounced, announced their way through the last eight years. And all the while, the delivery of public goods and services in this country has diminished. Has diminished. Now, how many people read the paper this morning, Sunday Sun? Most people? Ah, uh, okay. I actually read it like quarter past 12 this morning. And I was horrified. Because on the front page, I see reference to paying for sea baths. And I'm like, we can't be serious. We cannot be serious. But let me, let me, let me explain why I bring that issue here to you right now. Because rather than, when I read the, the, the article in, in, its, in, its, in its fullness, it brought me back to something that coincidentally was on the same front page. Uh, there was, an, uh, if you notice, there was a, um, a photo of Carol Roberts on the front page as well. Uh, I recall three years ago, I was on Fair Works, talking about the contribution, economy and culture and all these other things. And I asked Carol and Dennis at that time, how much would they pay for a sea bath? So I'm looking at the paper and I'm like, Carol, sea bath, I'm paying for a sea bath. I, 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 I started to get concerned because the context in which I asked that was, was with respect to the way that we treat the marine environment and what is the value that we would put to resources like that. And so the fact that the, the, the government has not articulated a clear view, because don't get me wrong, when you're in a, a fiscally tight position, you have to consider all things. But there are certain things that when you consider it is, a, is on the table, okay, good, off, it's gone. So the concern that I have now is that with the level of expenditure that we are seeing in the estimates and the, it's almost a penchant to find something to tax, something to tax. I am concerned at the fact that the government has not said, listen, that is completely off the table. Now, I know it's not workable. It is not workable. But 
as they would normally do. They would try to implement it. They would fail at it. And in the meantime, cause people undue grief, which they have done so far. And it's something that I think that as policymakers and as Barbadians, we have to be mindful that every time someone comes with a brilliant idea that they think it is, we have to examine how practical something like that could possibly be. In much the same way as a solid waste tax was ill-conceived, Ill this, this is another one of those elements that I believe is ill-conceived. And the problem is when you are feeling around in the dark, is because you simply have not taken stock of where you are. The priorities of spending are completely wrong. Completely wrong. And that's just not me saying so. We can feel it. We can feel it. There used to be a time when if your garbage wasn't collected this week, you could be assured that it would be, it would be collected next week. And that was, not, that was an exception rather than the norm. There was a time when our children, having left secondary school, could pursue studies at the, the Polytechnic, the BCC, or the University of the West Indies of their choice. Okay? There was a time when, what, yes, there were, there were always some issues with water, but its distribution was never in doubt. But you have to plan. You have to plan. And when you have information available to you, well in advance of a situation, you have to take that information and execute the plan that is going to resolve that situation. And as we all know, things come up. Things come up. But there's nothing in here that they took the government by surprise. Nothing at all. It is a complete failure of execution. Ladies and gentlemen, a complete failure of execution, a failure of conception on the part of the government. Now, I come back again to fiscal discipline. Discipline. You cannot come in the middle of a calendar year when each and every one of us would have planned our affairs for the most part and say that you're going to retroactively apply tax policy. You cannot. It completely undermines the credibility of the fiscal policy that you say that you want, or the fiscal consolidation, let me put it that way, that you want to achieve. You cannot. And one of the things that the Barbados Labour Party and its members and supporters should be proud of is that each and every time we have had the opportunity to lead this country, we have given people a sense of relative certainty. <laughs> relative certainty about fiscal policy. That is important, ladies and gentlemen. That is important. So, as I said, it is not sexy. It is one of those things that in order for any government to be successful in executing any of its programs, stated objectives, the Minister of Finance has to be the anchor has to be the anchor. When that person goes out and says anything that relates to tax, to fiscal policy and Barbados, it must be believed. It must be believed that it will be implemented in, at the time that it will be implemented. But I'm going to leave you with this because it goes back to, as I said, the context of fiscal discipline. And some of you may not recall, but there was supposed to be a, a fuel cess announced last year that was supposed to help pay down the arrears of the QEH. Now, this was announced in June of 2015. And this is why I said you're, we are not responding to the needs 
of the moment. Up until last week, when I checked, that specific policy has not yet been implemented. No, don't get me wrong, I don't want to pay any more taxes. I really don't. But if you tell me that you are responding in this way to alleviate the concerns that citizens have about the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, then you have not just to announce policy, you have to implement policy and follow through. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm suggesting to you, to all those who are listening, that these estimates here, as currently constituted, they're not going to help make our lives any better next year or the year after that. Now, we know that we're moving closer and closer to an election. So it is our responsibility to remind our neighbors, our friends, our families, and even strangers that you see in the street. We have to remind them of the consequence of electing incompetent people. Now, one last thing. Fiscal discipline. Centered in the minister or the ministry of finance must permeate the rest of government because the Minister of Finance has to play that role. And it is critical when you're in a situation where the economy is struggling to grow by their own policy. But the Ministry of Finance, led by the Minister, who may or may not be the Prime Minister at any point in time given our history, that discipline must permeate the government. And so when you look through these estimates, if, you're, if you don't have anything better to do, that is, when you look through these estimates, you have to be concerned for your children and your grandchildren's future because none of the standards of living, as I would say, are being improved by any of these estimates. And we have to make sure that we start to focus the minds of our members, of our supporters, in the direction of correcting this problem. In order for us to deliver a better life for our people, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, we must be adamant that this kind of thing is not right for Barbados. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for your attention. Good evening. <laughs>